Some of the greatest discoveries in human history have been found through just taking two seemingly disparate elements and just smashing them together. Liam Neeson and revenge thrillers, keyboards and cats, Brian Adams and Mel C. I mean, even food don't taste that good without just smashing things together. Look at peanut butter and jelly, an all-time classic. But what about peanut butter and other stuff? Peanut butter and Nutella. Tastes good. Peanut butter and honey. I'm into it. I like it. Peanut butter and mustard. Why? 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 All of these building blocks have just as much potential to produce a winning toast topping when combined. I know that they don't, but before the point of putting them in your mouth, they might do, and that is a fun process of discovery. Not this though, this is, uh, this is the devil's food. Excuse me. <coughs> so anyway, we're talking about Smash Up and I'm here to try to convince you that this game about taking two disparate pop culture icons and fusing them into one monstrous Dr. Moreau deck in order to conquer more bases than your opponent is more masterpiece than a toilet. Adam wouldn't share the smoking jacket, so I'm doing it in the dressing gown. So, for the uninitiated, Smash Up describes itself as a shuffle building game. The idea being that rather than collecting cards through booster packs to pre-build your deck like in games like Magic the Gathering, or slowly growing the size of your deck throughout a match like deck builders such as Star Realms, you instead pick two factions of 20 cards and you smash them together to create this crazy combined deck of 40 cards. For instance, the starter box comes packaged with eight factions. You got zombies, you got ninjas, you got dinosaurs, you got robots, wizards, aliens, pirates and tricksters, which are like these naughty little gnomes and they're the absolute bane of everyone's existence. So you pick two and suddenly you've got zombie wizards or robot aliens or ninja tricksters, which if anyone picks, you should kick them out of your friendship group. With just those first eight factions, that is 64 possible combinations. But after multiple expansion releases, the number of factions in the game has now ballooned to 82, with the likes of Vikings, Samurai, Sharks, Pretty Kitties, Knockoff Power Rangers, Technical Face and his mates, and now eight Marvel factions all getting representation. So if just eight factions produced 64 combinations, then 82 factions is gonna produce like, a f ton, a f ton. It's like a mind-meltingly big number. The kind of thing that might take Douglas Adams' deep thought a few million years to work out. The reason you, humble human, for whom 42 just means the age where you might consider suddenly buying a motorbike, the reason you would want to try all of these combos is because each faction brings a different game mechanic to the table, which fundamentally breaks the rules of the game. And with two factions on your team, that is two ways to bend the rules in your favor. But before we blow this whole thing wide open, I should probably tell you what this thing is because Smash Up is all about these little bad boys bases. Now each faction deck has two base cards that go along with it. And before the game starts, you gather up all the bases for all of the factions in play to create the base deck. You then draw one base per player, so that's three in this case, plus one, and you replace bases with bases from the base deck every time one gets broken. Now you may notice that the bases are covered in numbers. This little one in the top left is the amount of power needed to cause the base to break, at which point it will pay out these numbers as victory points. The first player to go over 15 VP wins, and if multiple people do, it's whoever has the highest. To break bases, players are gonna take turn playing cards to them to grow their power. Now each turn, players can play one action and one minion from their hand. They start the game with five cards and draw two more at the end of their turn, but just about every faction is gonna with this established order. 
So the most common way to win a base is to send your minions over to lurk around and look menacing. This number at the top is the amount of power they contribute to the overall total on the base. So if I send my Pirate King, the famous knockoff Costco Jack, to this base, he's going to contribute five points of power to this total. But certain action cards also increase your power either by upgrading a minion, giving you a one turn boost or being played to a base itself to augment everything you have there or even block other players from playing there in the first place. And once the power total for a base exceeds that number there, pro tip use dice to help you out with the arithmetic, the base is going to break at the end of that player's turn and bequeath its points based booty to the player who has the most power there, which is me. <laughs> Simple enough, but here is where where things get fun because most minions have abilities that either activate when they're played or ongoing for the entire time they're on the field or activate under special circumstances they can be anything from destroying a minion see you later raptor they can be playing an extra action this turn or moving cards around swapping things in your hand like the ninja acolyte can do that Couple this with action cards that let you play extra minions, search your deck, draw new cards and play out of the discard pile just to name a few and suddenly your simple two move turn turns into this cascading combo of abilities and effects that can completely smash the status quo on a base to smithereens. Never mind the fact that the bases themselves also have abilities. Oh I'm sorry. You thought you were winning? Well, I'm just going to go play this, which allows me to play this, which allows me to play this, which allows me to draw two cards, and I play this, 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 and this, and now I've won the base. When your two factions find some kind of synergy, Smash Up really sings as the mechanics of two different classes merge to create an unstoppable torrent of base-breaking power. Until your opponent gets to answer back. Of course. Because even when a base's power level is exceeded, it doesn't break until the very end of that player's turn, what is known as the score bases phase. Here, all players have the chance to use special abilities and actions to either sneak their minions onto bases like the shinobi at the last minute, or they can nerf their opponents in order to leapfrog into the top spot. It becomes about working out what your faction does and what the other players might be trying to do, because sure, you might be tacking your big lumbering Jurassic lackeys onto a base in order to overwhelm it, but if the pirates play full cell, suddenly your peaceful wildlife sanctuary is overwhelmed with scurvy sea dogs. Get that down, yeah. And I think that's the beguiling beauty of Smash Up System, because every time you open up that box, or in my case, this very intense card quiver, you leaf through and you pick out a duo of decks to use, something new is always waiting for you. You might fall back on Old Faithful and the zombies, but this time you might pair them up with the with the princesses to create the Zack Schneider wet dream zombie princesses. Or you could pair them up with the bear cavalry to create snarling stalkers of the frozen tundra as the mottled rotting paws of decaying polar bears tread through the frigid landscape ridden by imperialistic undead in uniform. Some memory of their military training driving them to corral their enemies as zombies rush to the kill zone to rend and tear. That is to say that zombies come out of the discard pile and the bear cavalry move minions around in order to destroy them. A rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. But for a game without an overarching narrative, nothing tying this team up together beyond the mechanical satisfaction of finding factions that synergize well, Smash Up just prompts this kind of imaginative response in players. Its factions have all been plucked from pop culture by an expert eye and brought to life with this comical, cartoon swagger, a kind of knowing wink when flying in the face of copyright. Look at that, that's Megatron, but it's not Megatron, it's a knockoff Megatron. These are knockoff Transformers. And it's got this flair of an individual artist for each individual team. What that creates is a roster that begs you to combine them and to tinker and to play and to join in with this kind of B-movie monster mashup as you and your friends field your faves from across the pop culture universe. Each game of Smash Up is basically a comic book splash panel of colourful characters all working in concert. It's Avengers Endgame's climactic battle if on Cap's left was a chubby Elvis impersonator or this screaming ball bag. It's every who would win in a fight conversation in game form. And that's a similar line that the brilliant Unmatched is also trying to walk. And much like that game, it's about mechanically trying to capture the feeling of commanding an army of aliens who beam minions up off the field, or robots that endlessly replicate and grow in power, or vampires that can destroy minions in order to steal their might. 
Now, if you're a sucker, pun intended, for this kind of thematic gameplay, then Smash Up is the gift that keeps on giving, because not only are you aliens aliens, they're also robots come to this planet to whisk away all who stand in their way while their robots assimilate and crush all sentient life under their metallic boots. It's basically fun Skynet. And sure, not every faction combo clicks together with Lego-like levels of satisfaction, but they just physically couldn't. And I've played a lot of this game, and sometimes you just got a load of square pegs and very round, grumpy-looking cats that can has f off. But somewhere in that deck, there must be a fun fusion. Somewhere, surely, please, this time, please, harder cards, harder cards, harder cards, God damn! So yeah, if you're the sort of person who enjoys their card games in the magic mold where you carefully craft a deck that is completely trimmed of fat, you might need to adjust your expectations. Because Smash Up's shuffle building can be hit or miss. But for me, it's those colourful, characterful factions that always pull you back in for like, one more dip in the quiver. Which sounds really gross when you say it out loud. I'm, I'm sorry, I put that away. And I think that's what designer Paul Peterson was aiming for, because he's a dab hand at hand design, by which I mean he's worked on Magic the Gathering, Hercules, Xena and Harry Potter card games, as well as the Pokemon TCG. In those type of titles, deck building can be a case of weighing up thousands of options, playtesting, micro-adjusting, and usually sinking some serious dollar into chasing the meta. Which was something Peterson said was a daunting task for most players, and fundamentally detracts from the fun of the core of all of these titles, which is card interaction. So enter Smash Up, a game where the choice isn't between thousands of cards for each individual slot in your deck, it's instead about opening up that box and having a choice between A, B, C or D, or in this case, Pirates, Ninjas, Zombies and Robots, PNZR which was actually the working title for the game. And as someone who's always dabbled in collectible card games, but struggled to stay competitive financially, and just from the brain space perspective of keeping on top of an ever-evolving metagame, Smash Up was like a breath of fresh air to me. Not only because, I mean, can you see a meta here, but getting your head around a good combination comes easily the more you play. It's obvious that zombies which rise from the discard pile synergize well with ghosts that reward you for putting things in the discard pile. But also because the emphasis is firmly on experimentation and discovery. Each game is an opportunity to get alchemical with your card choices, and the stakes actually just feel lower because of that. If there was like an arcade version of a card game, this is it. If you lose, no biggie, GG, pop another 50p in the machine, and you go again. Look at me, arcade machines that run on 50p's. It's more like you feed your whole wallet in it now, and then you can have a go. Though for all its casual simplicity, Smash Up does still struggle with some of the same issues a lot of card games have. Confrontation is completely direct. This is a take that game to its core. Some decks block your ability to even do anything, and there is a lot of maths, especially if you add in the Cthulhu sets and these madness cards, which deduct victory points at the end of the game if they are still in your deck. Thanks Lovecraft, you many tentacled wanker. And as more factions have been added through the myriad expansions, the extra mechanics have ballooned because there are now giant titans which work kind of like extra minions but loom large next to bases for the whole time. There are high noon jewels thanks to the cowboys. You can bury cards and unearth them later if you're playing as the ancient Egyptians which is a lot to take in. What once seemed like a very simple game becomes actually quite complex. So yeah, it can be clunky and clumsy at times, but I mean, the clue's kind of in the title. It's not called Finesse Up, is it? It's about cherry picking the most fun bits of pop culture and smushing them together to see what happens. I am gonna regret doing that. Smash Up is a game that me, my brother and our mates play religiously because Smash Up is the game that brings all those disparate threads of geekdom together into one weird, funny, imaginative whole with a pretty darn good card game at its core, especially for three or four players. Two players. Not really. And for me, it was a game that made me want to buy more. More expansions, this bloody quiver thing, card sleeves, and importantly, other games. Smash Up, to me, was the perfect gateway game. It's got this blockbuster premise, it's got cartoonish factions, a system that is simple to understand, and yet once it all starts to roll, you can gain 
unstoppable momentum. Or you can just hide in plain sight waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Or you can just be a massive dick. It's all in here, folks. It's all in the quiver. Dick in the quiver. Is it a masterpiece? I mean, probably not, but I'm not entirely sure what the criteria for that is. Is it the sort of game that can spark a love for card games, board games, and everything in between? Absolutely, exactly. And is it a game that despite being a gateway to all of this wondrous world of other titles, I still find myself coming back to play time and time again? You can bet your bum cheeks. So that is to say that Smash Up is always going to be something that is very special to me. It's always going to be the game that got me through the door, got me interested in this entire world, and I'm hoping that if you give it a chance, it can be the same thing to you. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and if you're a Smash Up pro, let me know your go-to faction combo in the comments down below. And if you fancy some more no rolls bar goodness, why not watch Luke's excellent deep dive into the history of Dungeons and & Dragons and the satanic panic where a lot of people failed their religions check. It's the little D&D joke for you there. Pick the video, get on board.